Legislation on Beacon Hill would dedicate state funding to address the impacts of climate change. Joining us live now to talk about Climate and Community Resilience Fund is Steve Long, the Director of Government Relations for the Nature Conservancy. Thank you, Stephen, for joining us. Yeah, Steve, thank you. First of all, can you briefly explain to us what this legislation would do? Absolutely. Very happy. Um, thank you for having me. Um, the legislation would create a fee on property insurance that would go into a fund, and that fund would help address the causes and impacts of climate change. And it would really help communities survive and thrive extreme heat, extreme precipitation, and drought, all the impacts that we're seeing in Massachusetts. And we have a focus on communities that have been historically impacted, environmental justice populations, low income populations, and the fund would help provide support for those communities. They would help engage those communities in solutions, and solutions could include things like tree planting to help reduce the heat island effect and address flooding. It could include things like addressing high energy costs by supporting the transition away from fossil fuels to clean energy. So we're really excited about this legislation. We have some good support um, from both senators and representatives, Senator Sal Domenico from East Boston and EJ community, Senator Natalie Blay from the Connecticut River Valley uh, represents low income rural communities and part of EJ communities in Greenfield and also representative Pat Duffy from Holyoke. And we have a really interesting coalition behind this. Um, there are environmental, environmental justice, community-based organizations, and business organizations who are supporting this legislation. And they really helped inform what is included in the legislation. And the legislation sets up a board that would be making all the decisions about what the money gets spent on and how the money gets spent. And the how has really been a huge challenge on addressing climate change with environmental justice populations and also um, low income communities. How do you get people to the table? How do you support them and provide them compensation? How do you learn from their experience? Because climate change just isn't about the science of what's happening. It's about what works for people and having a people centered approach is really essential here. We are all hyper focused since Earth Day was yesterday. What's different about this approach to funding community resilience? I think putting the decisions um, in the hands of a board, and that board would be comprised primarily of community-based organizations. They would have the ability to look at existing state agency programs and see what's working for EJ communities and low-income populations and <coughs> what's not working and of what's not working, they could make recommendations about how these programs could be better managed to reach those populations. And then if there are gaps where programs don't exist, they could make recommendations about how new programs could be developed and implemented. So right. it's really about having people at the table. That's great. Well, that is the Nature Conservancy's Director of Government Relations, Steve Long. Steve, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome, and thanks for having me. Take care.